Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's small business webinar. My name is Paul LaChapelle. I'm with Montana State University Extension, and it's my pleasure to welcome you all to uh, the October small business webinar. Um, just a few housekeeping uh, items before we um, turn it over to our presenter today. Uh, first of all, we are recording uh, today's webinar, and we'll be posting that uh, archive link to our website, which is um, uh, detailed there in the Q&A box in the lower left uh, of your screen. Today's webinar is sponsored by the Small Business Development Centers, which are affiliated with the Montana Department of Commerce and U.S. Small Business Administration, as well as the Montana Economic Developers Association, MSU Extension, with additional support from the Great Falls Development Authority and the University of Montana. If you have any tech support questions, um, you can uh, call or email the, uh, the number that's listed again in that Q&A box. Happy to help you with any questions that might come up. Um, you will have an opportunity to uh, uh, ask questions or provide comments uh, throughout this presentation. And um, I'll just uh, simply interrupt uh, Tyler with, uh, with those questions or comments. So please use that Q&A uh, box uh, that you can see there for, uh, for any, uh, any questions or comments you might have. So now it's my pleasure to introduce today's presenter, Tyler Manzales is the marketing specialist with Great Falls uh, Small Business Development Center, and uh, he's going to be talking today about marketing on LinkedIn. So Tyler, welcome, and I'll turn it over to you. Awesome. Thanks, Paul. Can, can you hear me just fine? Great. All right. Um, so... Uh, welcome everyone uh, to the small business webinar series. Today we're going to talk about uh, either promoting yourself or your business with LinkedIn. Uh, I just wanted to give you a little bit about myself. Um, so my name is Tyler Manzales. Uh, I've been working here at Great Falls Development Authority and with the Great Falls Small Business Development Center um, for a little over a year now. Uh, my, my position here is um, a tad complicated. Um, so basically, I split my time, 50% um, is marketing the products and services of Great Falls Development Authority, and the other 50% of my time is spent um, coaching small business clients on their marketing strategy and uh, marketing implementation of that strategy. Um, so I've given you my contact information here. Um, you can check out the website. Uh, and then for anyone who is uh, interested, um, there is a little plug down there. If you want to text uh, that GFDA to the number there, you'll, you'll be added to our top 10 list where you receive notifications for uh, a variety of business trainings uh, just like this one. So important reminders as we uh, as we start talking about LinkedIn, um, and these go outside the LinkedIn platform, and these are just uh, general best practices for any sort of marketing strategy. First and foremost, know your customer. You have to know your customer. Um, so you know don't don't use LinkedIn or any any social platform really to find new customers because it's something that's new and flashy to you or because it's something that you know your friend is using or you know another business is using it you always should uh, come at these things from a from a strategic point of view so use LinkedIn because you've identified that one of your target markets exists on the platform and then related keep in mind what LinkedIn is and is not. So while LinkedIn shares some similarities with other social media platforms like uh, most namely Facebook, uh, LinkedIn users behave and interact with specific types of content in very specific ways. And we'll, we'll go over that in the course of this presentation. But I just wanted to, to be upfront with you all to, to just keep those things in mind as we go through this presentation. So who's on LinkedIn? Um, basically, LinkedIn was designed with a working professional in mind. Um, so as opposed to something like Facebook, you know, Facebook is um, kind of trying to be everything to everyone. LinkedIn is not. LinkedIn is trying to be everything to the working professional. With that said, there are currently over 590 million professionals on LinkedIn. So there is a a gigantic market, um, and though that of course segments out by profession, by industry, um, and you can just narrow it down from there. 
Uh, and these professionals represent the largest group of, and these are important, influential, affluent, and educated people on a given platform. So what we're going to talk about today in regards to LinkedIn are the opportunities that LinkedIn presents through their platform. Um, and I put over here on the right hand side, I want you all to think with each of these about the words thought leadership. And we'll, we'll cover that as we go into each one of these. So starting out first, we have LinkedIn pages. So most of you, I hope, um, already have a LinkedIn profile. Once you have a LinkedIn profile, you have the option of creating a LinkedIn page. And pages are basically where you can catch the eye of prospective customers and build relationships with existing customers by featuring, and this is the important part, relevant content. Um, and then in addition to LinkedIn pages, there are these, uh, these pages called showcase pages that basically serve the same purpose, but you would use it for something more like a, a specific line of your business or a line of products or initiatives within your company. So um, a, a good example would be something like, um, let's take a huge company like Apple, for instance. So Apple is gonna have a, a LinkedIn page, right? That is the company, Apple Incorporated. Um, but they might have a showcase page for the iPhone. They might have another showcase page for um, the, the iWatch, right? Or um, something like Mac computers. Um, all of these things that are um, uniquely specific to the Apple brand, um, but they don't want to clog up their one business page with all of these different products. And so you have the option to segment that out. In terms of LinkedIn pages, what to share on there, um, any company news, uh, updates, blog posts, things that you're putting out are great. Um, video content, if you can turn all of your content into video content, you're, you're on the right track. Um, the, the phrase that I like to use is video is king. Um, people interact more and more with uh, graphic content, with photo content, and specifically with video content as opposed to text content. Um, any blogs, if you maintain a blog, blog posts are great. Uh, to share on your, your LinkedIn page. Industry news and research, case studies, webinars like this one, or content produced by business leaders, and then eye-catching visuals and statistics. I put the, uh, the pixel image specifications there uh, just because LinkedIn, like other platforms, follows very, very specific um, pixel image. And then uh, for these, I just wanna put a plug. Um, so with all social media marketing, um, I want to put, put a bug in your ear. So I always call it, it's either the one to four rule or four to one, if you can remember those two numbers. Um, so basically for every uh, quote unquote self-serving post that you're going to post about your company, a product, um, in something that your company is doing, we want to share four kind of feel good posts. And on LinkedIn, that's going to be um, relevant industry knowledge, uh, perhaps content that's produced outside of your business, um, something that is not a hard sell. Uh, and the reason for that is because increasingly, uh, consumers are tuning out hard sells and what they're really cluing into are those um, authentic, genuine pieces of content. And so for every for every one hard sell, you want to have some sort of authentic uh, or four authentic, genuine pieces of content to back that up. Um, and then over on the side here, page updates containing links have on average about 45% higher follower engagement than updates without links. So if you're posting an update on your page, having some sort of uh, external link that folks can follow is automatically gonna put that piece of content above the rest. So just um, going into how to create a LinkedIn page. So this is my LinkedIn profile here. And if you go up into this work dropdown here, it's going to direct you to a drop down, and you have a number of options here. We'll go through some of the other options, but if you look down at the very bottom, you have this option here to create a company page. 
And LinkedIn is a pretty uh, user-friendly platform. It'll walk you through the steps to set up your company page. Um, but I'm just going to go through a couple of best practices here for you. So using uh, PTC, they're a computer software company based out of Boston, Massachusetts. Um, they were voted one of the uh, one of the top LinkedIn pages of 2018, which is the reason that I'm using them. Um, but similar to uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, other social media platforms, there are a couple things that we want to make sure that we have. Um, if you can, and if you have a logo, hopefully you do. Um, if not, it's worth the money to invest in, in getting one created. You want to use your logo as your, your profile picture. Um, that is your branding. It's how people are going to identify with you. And that should be uh, kind of, you know, at the forefront of the page. Always providing a description. So if folks happen upon your page, you want a short description that can um, provide folks with who you are, what you do, and why they should care about it in as few words as possible. And then um, I didn't circle it here, but making sure that you you fill in your about section so that if people are interested, they can learn more in depth about you. Um, so then talking about these affiliated pages. So PTC is a computer software company. As you can imagine, uh, they have multiple um, multiple divisions within that. So there's this PTC uh, Creo or Creo. And basically uh, what this particular thing does is it helps manufacturers create 3D computer image models of um, really anything that they could create. So car parts, uh, computer parts, things like that. And so rather, again, rather than clogging up their LinkedIn page with, uh, with all of these very specific uh, product related updates, they're going to separate it out into an affiliated page. And as you can see over here on the lower right hand side, PTC has more than just this, this one affiliated page, they actually have multiple. Um, so just keeping in, keeping in mind that that's an option. Um, so I got a little notification. Any questions so far? Oh, Stephanie uh, okay. has just posted a question. Um, the question is, we are working on a website to promote small business and tourism here on the High Line, Montana. Would it help for us to make a LinkedIn or is this more for business, small business owners? That is a very good question and thank you for asking it. Um, so. In the beginning, LinkedIn was pretty much just a, a B2B platform, business to business. Um, increasingly, there are uh, folks from, from outside that business to business community who are taking advantage of LinkedIn, but they're taking advantage of LinkedIn in a very specific way. Um, so I'll give you a couple examples. Um, take a company like Rolex, for example, right? Rolex makes high-end watches. And Rolex actually took advantage of LinkedIn and did a campaign that was um, looking at people who had basically promotions in the, you know, in the recent past or will have promotions in the future and hitting them with an ad that's, you know, like, hey, celebrate your promotion um, with um, with a Rolex watch, basically, you know, sort of a treat yourself sort of thing. Um, and they had very, very high success with that. Um, other travel agencies specifically are using that as well. So, um, you know, targeting upper, you know, executive level folks at companies like, you know, you work hard on the day to day, you deserve a vacation. Here are the top spots that uh, CEOs and exec level people are, are taking, something like that. Um, specifically for small businesses and tourism on the high line, I think it, it would go back to what your strategy is. I definitely think, especially on the small business side, there is a market for that, especially if you're providing um, trainings or services that are going to help small businesses, help promote small businesses. Um, even creating something that is a thought leadership campaign where you could, you know, crowdsource content from small business on, small businesses on the high line, what it's like to own a small business on the high line, the challenges that small businesses are facing, um, ways that other people have overcome those challenges, things like that. Um, certainly there, there is a market, but if you're outside of that 
um, quote unquote, regular business to business, it'll just take a little bit of creative thought behind it. Um, but you can definitely tap into that market. Hopefully that answers that question. <laughs> Great. Um, all right. Jesus, so thank you. Great. Thank you. So moving on to LinkedIn SlideShare. So SlideShare um, currently has more than 70 million monthly viewers. Um, and there's about 400,000 new presentations that are uploaded each month, which makes SlideShare the world's largest professional content sharing community um, currently. Um, and that honestly is something that you can't afford to overlook. Um, so what to share on LinkedIn SlideShare? There's a variety here. Um, company videos, again, video is king. Uh, you can cross post this. So, you know, if you want to create an update on your LinkedIn page, you want to upload that company video to LinkedIn SlideShare. Um, webinar and conference recording. So I could very well take the recording of this, upload it on LinkedIn SlideShare and hit a much larger audience um, that is usually going to expand outside of my target market, um, which is not, not necessarily a, a bad thing. Uh, influencer videos, if you're taking advantage of someone who is very well known within your industry, um, then you know share that share that influencer video, get those hits. It's a great way to uh, to promote your company using someone outside the company who's well known. Product how tos if you're in the uh, in the business of creating products, company presentations, webinar decks, infographics, and nicely designed short and informative content. Um, so another uh, little thought here is another way that you can increase your, your views on LinkedIn SlideShare is to link your uh, SlideShare presentation to your website, and that'll give you a great inbound link. Um, so how to get to LinkedIn SlideShare? Again, if you go to that work dropdown, right where we went to create a company page, you'll see this option for SlideShare there. Um, you'll have to link your profile to it um, and follow a couple steps, uh, but it's pretty easy and then you'll be able to start uploading things to SlideShare. Any questions on SlideShare? Nothing posted. Okay, great. Then let's talk about LinkedIn Groups. So LinkedIn Groups, um, again, another facet of LinkedIn. Groups are basically designed to help build and foster community. Um, and this is where you can either generate or contribute to conversations around topics that are timely to, to your industry, to your business industry. Um, what to share? Typically, people are using groups as a forum for discussion, right? And I think it's important to note here to avoid self-promotion. Um, again, think thought leadership. You want to either start a discussion that people are, are going to find meaningful and that they're going to relate to um, or contribute to that discussion in a way that is um, that is productive and is moving the conversation forward or helping to um, resolve or or again, move that conversation forward. So. Um, uh, people are super in tune to, to self-promotion, so I would not go into a LinkedIn group and start talking about how great you are, how great your company is, um, but what you could do is contribute to a conversation of, um, you know, I see that people are having this challenge. Here's a way that our company overcame it, um, and I'd be happy to discuss further on, you know, actionable steps that our company took. That's the sort of thing that you're going to want to uh, contribute to a LinkedIn group. Use as a catalyst for thought leadership and community, spark conversations about industry trends and challenges, or ask questions to crowdsource sentiment. So again, if, you, if you're not in the uh, game of creating content or you're not uh, super comfortable with creating content just yet, LinkedIn groups are a great way to tune into what your industry is talking about. And then you can crowdsource that third party content that can then be cross-posted to things like your, your LinkedIn page. And with LinkedIn groups, um, as with anything else on LinkedIn, really, what you put into it, you're gonna get equally out of it. So if you're not putting much into LinkedIn groups, don't expect much in return. 
And then I think, so um, again, how to find LinkedIn groups, go to that same work dropdown, right where we created a company page, right where we went to slide share, and you'll see this option here to uh, tune into LinkedIn groups. And these are things that you self-select. So you can search for um, things that are relevant to your industry. You're not automatically joined into groups. It's something that you have to opt into. Um, so don't expect it. Don't expect a LinkedIn to just uh, feed you group information based on what you've populated in your profile. You need to go and actively select that. Any questions about LinkedIn groups? Not yet. Okay, then I will move on. So LinkedIn sponsored content, everything we've talked about thus far, you can do for absolutely no money, no skin in the game, um, and, and see a pretty good return on it, to be honest. Now, let's say that you start by creating a LinkedIn page, you've got some, um, you've contributed to some group conversations, um, and done all of these, these no cost options, and you're seeing good return and you wanna see that return heightened, that's when you would look at LinkedIn sponsored content. There are two different types of sponsored content. I'm gonna cover both of those. So there's our, our regular sponsored content and then there's direct sponsored content. So our plain old run of the mill sponsored content is basically um, you would publish content on your LinkedIn page and then it's similar to like a Facebook boost. It's something that you have to post first and then would sponsor after the fact. As opposed to direct sponsored content, this is something that you're gonna create in LinkedIn's uh, ad manager. And this allows you to share content directly in the feed without having to originate the post on your LinkedIn page. Um, so it's something where, you know, if you, um, if you want to put out a post that you that you just don't want to share on your LinkedIn page, um, you're able to do that with an ad manager, and then you're also um, you're also able to personalize this a little bit more than your regular old sponsored content. Um, you can test and retest. You can do A/B testing, things like that. If these terms are are unfamiliar to you, um, come and talk to me. I mean, this is this is what I do on the the day in day out, and I'd be happy to. Um, to uh, talk about that a little bit more. And it looks like we have a question from Sherry. Um, so why would you not want an ad on your page? Um, that's a good question. Um, and I think companies, depending on, on what it is that they're doing, um, would go about this in a different way. So let's say, um, let me use a, a comparison again. So sponsored content, I'm going to put a post on my page and then I'm going to sponsor that. After I sponsor that, I, I really can't change anything about it without changing that original post on my page. Um, now with direct sponsored content, what I can do is I can, um, I can put out, let's say like a hundred variations of the same ad. Um, so I'm not going to want to put, I'm not going to want to post on my page a hundred variations of that same ad. That's that's definitely going to be overkill. Um, but with direct sponsored content, I can I can very specifically target you know a hundred different um, audiences basically, um, and I wouldn't be able to necessarily do that by just um, putting regular old sponsored content a hundred times over on my LinkedIn page. Does that make sense? Hopefully so, great, all right, yes, thank you. So uh, what to share in terms of LinkedIn sponsored content, uh, links to your latest and greatest white papers if you're in the game of doing that, eBooks, case studies, industry articles, helpful how-to content, and any of these that you're sharing, you're gonna want to, again, have some sort of nice graphic to go along with it if you're able to, um, if you're able to make that as a video plug, that's even greater. Um, and then just a, a side note over here, for the best engagement, you're going to want to keep the text that's accompanying any sponsored content to under 150 characters. Um, I, I hate to say this about consumers, but consumers are lazy. <laughs> and so 
the um, the most information that you can provide in the fewest characters possible is always going to be your your best bet. Um, so in terms of sponsoring content, this is Great Falls Development Authority's business page. Um, and you'll see there, uh, we have two days ago, uh, we put up a top 10 posting or top 11. Um, and this is basically crowdsourced content that we receive from both internally and from the community. Now, let's say I wanted to sponsor that. You have this sponsor now option. This is this is the first option that I'm talking about. So we've posted, uh, we've made this post on our business page and I have the option to now sponsor it to reach that larger audience. If you click into that sponsor now, you're going to be directed into LinkedIn's campaign manager. This is where you're going to build a campaign and there, there are th three pretty simple steps um, and they get, you know, more and more narrow as you go into the steps. Um, but step one is setting up your campaign. And again, always come at anything that you're going to pay for. Make sure that you've got a strategy. Um, you know, if you're out there and you're doing testing for um, your page and it's free, there's little skin in the game. Try some things out. Um, but with something that you're paying for, always come at it with a strategy. So um, they they kind of help to direct you. You can go at it from a strategy of brand awareness, which is just letting people know about um, your brand, your business in a, in a pretty general sense. There's consideration, which is considered um, in terms of the marketing funnel, the middle of the funnel. So awareness is the top. That's where we're going to have the most people. Consideration is the middle of the funnel which we want to get website visits, we want to get engagement, we want to get video views. And then we come down to the bottom of the funnel, which is conversions, which is where we want to see lead generation, website conversions, or job applicants if you're putting a, a job posting out there. And so it really just takes knowing, you know, what um, what part of the funnel that you're in. And again, if, if this lingo is unfamiliar to you, please come talk to me. I, again, this is marketing strategy is what I do on the day to day. And so I would be more than happy um, to help you strategize and, and narrow these down. So once you've picked your objective, you're going to identify your audience. LinkedIn allows you uh, to narrow down your audience, uh, you know, pretty, pretty narrow. Um, and Again, this is all by what people self-identify on their profiles, similar to something like Facebook. Um, but with LinkedIn, people are they're they're identifying more about um, their business background than something like Facebook, Instagram. Um, then you choose your ad format. There are multiple ad formats, and it depends on what objective you've chosen, which which ad formats are going to be the best for you. You get to choose placement. You identify your budget and schedule. Um, based on the schedule and based on the number of people you want to reach, there's going to be a certain budget level that you have to uh, have to meet, but that'll all be spelled out. And then uh, you can allow conversion tracking as well. I would recommend this, especially if you um, if you work for a company that's very concerned about return on investment (ROI). Um, conversion tracking is going to allow you to see for how much money you put in basically what the return or you know the folks that you're seeing kind of come through the funnel for the money that you're putting in. Um, additional sponsored content, video. LinkedIn now offers a native video option uh, similar to Facebook and they have a call to action or multiple call to action options actually that's offered through their lead generation forms product. Um, this is just a pro tip. Video is five times more likely than other types of content to start a conversation. Um, and again, we're in the we're in the market of thought leadership and starting or promoting conversations. So anything that is going to promote conversation is always better. Um, and then carousel ads as well. This is just a way to add textures or add layers to your stories by featuring multiple visuals. Um, and folks are going to horizontally swipe through this. Um, this is I would say this is more apt to folks who are showcasing products. Um, so if you have a, a product line, you know, slap a carousel, slap a couple image in a carousel ad, allow people to kind of swipe through your product offerings. Um, that's that's really what you're going to see for carousel ads, though that's certainly not, um, it, it shouldn't be limited to that. Um, 
And another pro tip, 75% of beta advertisers said that they'll use carousel ads in their next sponsored content campaign. And this is largely due to folks seeing increased engagement and click-through rates. Um, so again, with all of your sponsored content, keep an eye on the engagement, keep an eye on click-through rates, keep an eye on just those, those conversion metrics. Um, and anything that you can do to increase those conversion metrics you're going to want to do. So video and carousel ads are definitely a great way to go. Um, so let's go back here. Any questions on sponsored content so far? This is a pretty, it's a pretty quick and a pretty general overview. Um, again, I, I don't want to get too uh, down and dirty with it just because the way that you sponsor content, the methods that you use, conversion tracking, all of those things are going to be very specific to your business. So this is where I would really make a plug to where, you know, if you're considering a sponsored content campaign, reach out um, either to me or reach out to the folks at LinkedIn. I mean, they really are the ex the experts in this. Um, but make sure that that you have a strategy. Make sure that you're following that strategy, and then we can go into best practices for for really how to how to get the most bang for your buck in that. But sorry, I, I talked a little more. Any questions on sponsored content so far? I don't see any posted yet. I'll keep you posted, Tyler. Okay, I'm gonna cycle through this because I know I'm over by a minute so far. So sponsored in-mail. In-mail is basically um, things that people are going to direct message to you. So you have the option to send personalized messages to people um, who matter most to your business. And in terms of what to share, uh, if you have a webinar or an industry event that you want to invite people to, if you have an ebook launch, product one sheeters, demos, infographics, blog subscription campaigns, things like that, these are folks that you would, again, it's, it's going to be highly targeted. And this is an option through LinkedIn's campaign manager as well as LinkedIn text ads. Um, so text ads are these little things that you'll see kind of on the side of your, uh, your LinkedIn feed. Um, and with text ads, you can target a professional audience on a budget that works for you. Um, pretty similar to, to LinkedIn's other sponsored content options. In terms of what to share, ebook launches, product one sheeters, webinar and industry event invitations, program demos, infographics, blog subscription campaigns. Things similar to what you might uh, send to folks through in-mail. Um, and then, so a little side note over here, when creating campaigns, I would try to use only a few targeting options at a, at a time. Uh, LinkedIn finds that most successful campaigns have an audience range between 60,000 and 400,000 people. So while narrowing down to a very specific audience, uh, can be good. You also want to make sure that you're not limiting it so much uh, to where you're excluding people that you maybe don't mean to exclude. So if if your um, if your estimated target dips below sixty thousand, maybe just go back and uh, reevaluate how many of those parameters that you've set on a sponsored campaign. And uh, these LinkedIn text ads are what you'll see over here in this red box, the promoted. So major takeaways with any new platform, even if you're not new to LinkedIn, um, start small. Start with creating a company page and expand from there. And this is the this is the big takeaway, as needed or warranted by your marketing strategy. So with everything, be strategic. Um, don't don't do spaghetti marketing. Don't just throw stuff against the wall. Hope that it sticks. Be strategic about, about what you're doing. Start small and expand from there. Do what makes sense for your business or target consumer. So after viewing this, you may think, you know, hey, maybe, maybe LinkedIn's not for me. That's okay. Invest your time in platforms that you know are going to give you a good return on, on the time or money that you're investing in it. With LinkedIn specifically, focus on thought leadership. This is not a place to do hardcore self-promotion. This is a place to start a conversation, partake in the conversation, and advance that conversation forward in your, your industry sector. And with anything new that you're gonna try, give it time. You're not gonna go from zero to a million followers overnight. LinkedIn is not really a viral, um, a, a platform that that looks at going viral as a as a metric. 
Um, you are looking to create meaningful connections, meaningful conversations. And then in terms of best practices, remember LinkedIn should be a part of your overall marketing strategy, not your entire strategy. So use LinkedIn in conjunction with other social media platforms, with other, um, with other marketing strategies, uh, just so that you're kind of covering more bases than just one. Be smart with your content, repurpose good content, crowdsource content. That's where things like LinkedIn groups come in. Um, but be smart with it. Don't start something that you can't maintain. Always have a goal when posting or sponsoring campaigns, especially sponsoring. Any money that you're going to put into, I cannot say enough, have a strategy. Strategy, strategy, strategy is the word. Um, always keep your audience in mind. Whenever you're posting something, ask yourself, is it relevant? And also, do you find it interesting? If you don't find it interesting, don't even bother posting it because chances are, if you don't find it interesting, your audience won't either. Again, avoid self-promotion. People really clue into that quicker, quicker than you think. And focus on creating conversation. Again, thought leadership. Social media is not one-sided, nor should it be. So focus on creating things that are going to get people to, um, to comment, to, uh, to partake in that conversation that you can then respond to. And then that's the end of my presentation. So any questions on, on what we covered? Great. Uh, we've got some folks typing questions, uh, Tyler. So let's give them a second to um, see what they have to say here. Great. Stephanie says, great webinar. Have a great awesome. day. Thank you. Um, Tyler, while Jason's typing, um, maybe you could um, just remind folks how they could get in touch with you um, if they did want to follow up or have um, have questions. Absolutely. Online. So <laughs> stay in touch. <laughs> Um, again, my name is Tyler Gonzalez. I'm the marketing associate and an SBDC business advisor here at Great Falls Development Authority, working in conjunction with the Great Falls Small Business Development Center. Um, my, uh, my phone number is there. Um, I did not include my email in there, which is a mistake on my part, um, but I can, I can put it in here. Uh, it's T, which is my first initial, my last name, Menzales, and that is at growgreatfalls.org. And again, just to put a plug in, um, Great Falls Development Authority, we send out our, our Great Falls Top 10 uh, pretty much every Sunday or Monday. If you want to uh, partake in that, you can visit the website. There's a sign-up option there. Uh, if you're a texter like me, just text GFDA to 22828, and uh, it'll ask for your, your email address, and you'll automatically be uh, put into that email list where you'll get notifications about this webinar and um, about other business related trainings as well as just uh, general business happenings around the uh, the Great Falls trade region anyways which covers a, a, a pretty large area and I saw that Jason or someone had put my uh, uh, had put my email address in there so feel free to reach out to me um, Jason asked if I'll be sharing the slide deck. I can definitely share this slide deck with you all. Um, hopefully we can get a, a follow-up email sent to you. And I will also um, put in that email, uh, LinkedIn has sent out a content marketing tactical plan, uh, which was the, the inspiration behind this presentation. It goes into a lot more detail. Um, and so I will, I'll try to send that along to you all as well so that you have uh, some, more, some more reading material and just material to, to educate yourself further on all of these opportunities that exist on LinkedIn. Awesome. That's great. Um, and Tyler, I'll work with you um, to send this information out on the listserv um, so we'll, we'll make sure that everybody has an opportunity to um, access that that information. So we'll uh, be sure to follow up with the link of the uh, recording as well as some materials. Um, uh, so with that, um, I see a few folks are, are just saying thank you. Um, Jason's just reminding us that a um, he'll be sending out a, a presentation evaluations and uh, surveys um, are how uh, we keep training events like this no cost so please do follow up um, with that evaluation um, uh, response when Jason sends it to you all 
Um, again, just getting some kudos, um, Tyler, from participants. So I will follow up and say thank you as well for the great information. Um, so many uh, great resources that you've offered us today. So appreciate uh, all of our participants' time and uh, Tyler uh, for the great information that you've presented. Thank you. Um, so uh, with that, yes, thank you, and thank you all. And yeah, go ahead. Yeah, good luck with your. Uh, with marketing. Awesome. Um, well, thanks, everybody. There's uh, no further questions coming up. So uh, with that, we'll wish you all a good day. And we'll see you uh, for our next webinar, which is November 7th. Uh, until then, take good care. And we'll see you on the Small Business Webinar Series next month. Bye now.